So today we are going to start a new topic, the plastic analysis, and we'll do the class in the live mode. So I'm just uh, sharing my screen. All right. Hope you are able to see my slides full screen. Yes, sir. All right. So be before we go into the problem solving, we will just uh, discuss some of the theoretical aspects, very basic aspects. So first of all, when we say design, there are two approaches. What are the two uh, most popular design approaches? One is the working stress method and the other is the limit state method. Now what is the difference between working stress and the limit state? Anyone would like to differentiate between the two? You can just raise your hand and we can just try to go on this topic interactively. What is the difference between limit state approach and the working stress approach? So no hands raised. So basically in the working stress or the limit state approach, the essential difference is the stress levels we are considering. So typically if we see the stress versus strain plot of a typical tensile test, it looks like this. And there are two very important points here. One is the point of the ultimate strength and the other is the yield stress. So this is the yield point and prior to the yield point, the system follows linearly elastic regime. Means it's linear and elastic. Elastic means that if you withdraw the loads, the curve will drop back to zero. So the loading and unloading curves, they will just follow each other. Okay, so that's why it's linearly elastic. But if you exceed the yield stress, then we go into this kind of zone where there is a, a flat plateau and after that there is a strain hardening region where there is a rise in the stress till the ultimate stress and then the material phase. So this is the stress versus strain diagram and this gives us the information about the difference between the limit state and the working stress method. In the working stress method, we define an allowable stress. So allowable stress is defined such that it is a fraction of the yield stress. So we define allowable stress as the yield stress divided by a factor of safety. For example, in the case of steel, the allowable stress is 60% of the yield stress. So then what we assume is that the stress in all working situations, it will be restricted to be under the allowable stress. So we will never allow the stress to exceed the allowable stress limit. That means the structure in all working conditions will always remain in the elastic zone and it will never exceed a fraction of the yield stress. So that's how we ensure that it's safe against failure. So here in the working stress approach, we don't use any load factors. The loads, whatever we calculate, dead loads, live loads, earthquake loads, we don't multiply with any factor. So here, because the structure is definitely in the elastic range, so elastic analysis of the structure is more or less. So that's the working stress method. Now in the case of the limit state method, what we do? We design the structure for the limit state of collapse. And then after that, we check the adequacy of the structure for the limit state of serviceability. And here we use partial factors of safety for loads as well as for the stresses. So stresses also they are reduced. And at the same time, the loads which are applied on the structure, they are also increased by factors which are called as the partial load factors or the partial factors of safety for the stresses. So that is the limit state method. But now there is a contradiction. Contradiction is that we assume the structure to be undergoing to the limit state of collapse. But as far as the analysis is concerned, 
we are doing only linear elastic analysis. So for limit state values of the quantities like axial force, shear force and bending moment, what we do is we simply multiply by load factors. For example, depending on the combination of the loads like dead loads and live loads, so we just apply a factor of 1.5 that is the load factor and for the combination like dead loads plus live loads plus earthquake loads we are applying a load factor of 1.2 so we assume that the ultimate state load is 1.2 or 1.5 times of the loads which are computed under the working circumstances so now in the case of the section design we follow very rigorous non-linear computations for example you have seen how we design the reinforced concrete sections for beams and columns we follow the actual stress strain curve of concrete we go beyond the linear limit and of course we use some uh, partial factors of safety also for both these stresses the stress in the case of the steel as less in the case of the concrete but the contradiction is that for the case of the design you follow very rigorous non-linear approach but for the case of the analysis we are doing just linear elastic analysis isn't this contradiction that for the case of design we are assuming the stress to have just exceeded either the yield stress or it is in the range between the yield stress and the ultimate stress but the analysis we are still lagging behind in analysis we assume everything to be linearly elastic means that our stresses they are within the elastic limit so this brings about contradiction now there are other flaws also associated with the conventional analysis approach let's see them now here this is an example this is a simply supported beam and this beam is under the action of a point load at the center so this is the bending moment diagram so we have the maximum bending moment at one point only when we uh, provide a section of the beam we provide a prismatic section but the design is based at a single point only because the bending moment is maximum at one particular point so what happens is that if the section is symmetrical just two points they each the yield value because the stress distribution is like this so if the section is symmetric both the extreme fibers they will reach the yield stress simultaneously okay for example we are talking about steel sections and we are talking about i sections for example so both uh, these they reach simultaneously on the other hand if you have unsymmetrical section in that particular case uh, it, this will not be the case only one point will reach the maximum yield stress value so this is called as the yield moment but the structure it has not reached the collapse state the structure can still carry further load because it has only reached the yield value. Excuse me sir. Yes. Yes, tell me what's the problem. Excuse me sir. Yes, tell me what's the problem. Yes, raise your hand and tell me your problem. Sir, we are not able to hear what you are saying because your voice is breaking. Sir. Don't worry, it's. Uh, I told you it's being recorded. It's being recorded also, so don't have to worry. So the structure has not yet reached the collapse state. It can still carry for the loads. Now what we see is that only these two points, just these two points of the entire structure, they have reached the yield stress value. So that means only these two points they are started going beyond the yield point but rest of the structure is well within the safe limit but then we are basing everything on these two points only so we have sort of over uh, designed the entire structure or entire beam here so why we do plastic analysis why go for plastic analysis there are several reasons for this number one we in the linear analysis elastic analysis we may think that the structure is at the yield moment but the structure still has capacity to sustain higher loads and bending moments 
so what happens is the actual failure load values which is the ultimate failure load and the ultimate moment they will be much higher they will be much higher as compared to the yield load and the yield moment so yield load means the actual load applied sir. corresponding to the two points or one mm -hmm. point reaching the yield stress so the actual ultimate failure loads they would be much higher so if we carry out plastic analysis Excuse we me, will sir. be able to go into the so if we uh, go by the plastic analysis we can get the actual load factor that is lambda because we'll be able to get the ultimate uh, load and then we have the ultimate uh, load and the yield load so we'll be able to get the actual load factor so basically plastic analysis it extends the limit state approach so far which was restricted to design aspect only to the load analysis so that makes the our analysis and the design compatible otherwise if we are doing linearly elastic analysis and then we are using the results just by multiplying by some factor for the case of design then this introduces a contradiction in the system all right so here basically in plastic analysis we take the actual behavior of the structure beyond the yield point so that's the most important thing in the case of the plastic analysis and we are uh, doing the very realistic analysis into account if we go for plastic analysis so let's see some of the assumptions before we go further we assume that hooke's law of elasticity holds till the yield point so till the yield point stress strain curve is linear then we assume that the yield stress and young's modulus they have same values for both tension and compression number 3 we assume that the stress strain curve it is same in both tension and compression number 4 we assume that there is no strain hardening that is we simplify or we idealize the stress strain curve so actual stress strain curve is like this but we idealize it to like this you, you see this is the strain hardening so this strain hardening is ignored in the case of the idealized curve and finally we assume that the section has at least one line of symmetry either it's bisymmetric like this or it's monosymmetric like this so at least one line of symmetry should be there so we are not considering sections like this so the reason is that the plane of loading and the plane of bending they should coincide with the plane of symmetry of the section otherwise the analysis which we are doing will not be valid okay so we are just uh, stopping here all right so you have any doubt on the material we have covered so it's uh, recorded so some of you you who have uh, net issues at your end you can just uh, go through the recording also so if you have any any issues with what we have covered today just raise your hand